inspectors will be out once again at Clareton Coke Works today. And yeah, they're checking to see that the pollution control systems are working properly. U.S. Steel is now facing its fourth fine from the Allegheny County Health Department in the past year. They're all from emissions problems at the Clareton Coke Works. The emissions are a threat to people with respiratory problems who may contract the virus and that the steel makers should stop production until the health crisis lifts. 76 years old. Uh, my heart uh, works at about 73% of capacity, and um, I don't mind smell, but uh, I have a good feeling that what we're doing here is going to kill me. Pollution from big industries can have detrimental effects on the health of nearby residents, and today we will be exploring the emissions from U.S. Steel's Clareton Coke Works located in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Throughout this presentation, we will introduce the background of steel production in Pittsburgh, addressing Clareton Coke Works' role in harming the community and what we hope to achieve in our investigation. We will analyze the transport mechanisms in which these emissions are spread throughout the air, the concentration of the emissions relative to the plant's surroundings, propose solutions to this problem, and we will lastly conclude our findings and discuss how they may be applied. To understand the context of our situation, we must look to Pittsburgh's background in big industry and the degradation in air quality that has resulted. The city's geographic location surrounded by three rivers and the consequential trade popularity, combined with an abundance of useful coal for energy has contributed to the prevalence of big industries, most prominently U.S. steel. The process of steel making involves converting coal to coke via extremely high temperatures in a dry distillation process. Clareton Coke Works, the largest coke manufacturing plant in the U.S., produces 4.3 million tons of coke per year and emits such harmful air pollutants as sulfur dioxide, benzene, and more. These coke emissions are known to potentially cause cancer and other health conditions, especially among children. A test performed by Pediatric Alliance revealed that 18.4% of children at Clareton Elementary School have asthma, more than double the national average. The following diagrams show the risk of cancer from harmful air pollutants among Allegheny County, particularly from coke emissions. As you can see, these risks are most concentrated in and around Pittsburgh and Clareton. With these many dangers in mind, there is an urgency to mitigate these emissions and promote cleaner sources of energy for U.S. Steel in order to protect our county's residents. Determining the concentration of such emissions will allow us to determine this problem's severity and the measures that can be taken. Proper analysis of these concentrations will rely on the application of mass transfer, specifically the diffusions of these pollutants through the atmosphere. The driving force behind this mass transfer is a gradient of concentration, or rather the difference of species concentration as position changes, which flows from high to low concentration. The disappearance of steam from a pot of boiling water is an example of such transfer, dissipating as distance from the pot increases. Molecular mass transfer describes the case with coke oven emissions and is carried about by two means, diffusion and convection. Convection is the transfer of molecules through a mobile interface while diffusion, our primary interest, is driven by the random motion of individual molecules of interest. Molecules tend to travel from a high to low concentration in order to avoid collisions with other molecules. In a dilute or binary system such as this one, the solute has a distinct diffusion coefficient depending on the physical properties of both species as well as the surrounding environment in which the diffusion is observed. A higher binary diffusion coefficient equates to a higher propensity for a dilute species to diffuse through its binary counterpart. In analyzing and simulating the species diffusion from Clareton Coke Works in our investigations, reasonable assumptions must be made to account for the complications with the surrounding environment and the unforeseeable variables that affect this diffusion. The first set of assumptions we must make are as follows. The production of the pollutants of interest from Clareton Coke Works operates at steady state, convective and advective flux are neglected, and the pollutants diffuse in the two-dimensional radial direction. Wind speed and exit velocity will be neglected to account for typical transfer, and the molecules will be treated as diffusing radially at the same rate in every direction from this plant. Our second set of assumptions will allow for necessary data to be obtained from the simulation. An average atmospheric temperature of 20 degrees Celsius will be assumed for our analysis, and the plant emissions will be produced at the approximate yearly limits established by the federal government, despite the plant frequently exceeding these limits. Each of these species will diffuse binary to the surrounding air independent of one another, as the many species diffused contribute minimally to one another's transfer. The final set of assumptions we must make are that the pollutants act as ideal gases, the perimeter of the plant itself is treated as a circle, and that no concentration gradient exists within the confines of the plant itself. 
The ideality of these emissions accounts for the many variations in gas compressibility factor and properties over the course of flue production. While assuming a circular perimeter accounts for the actual complex shape of Claritin Coke Works and the complications it presents, that still accounts for the entire area of the facility. Finally, the concentration of each species will be treated as constant within the plant, since multiple smokestacks contribute to overall species production. To model and analyze this concentration gradient, a simulation of the diffusion of sulfur dioxide and benzene will be presented using ComSol, a program replicating real-world scenarios in the physics behind them, aiding engineers and scientists alike in understanding such phenomena as pollutant diffusion. Using ComSol, the following animations and line plots were produced, representing the change in concentration of both benzene and sulfur dioxide as their distance from the plant increases. These simulations model a 24-hour period of the fusion from the plant, starting from the inner circle of the plant, where the concentration of benzene and sulfur dioxide is 0.483 and 40.32 moles per meter cubed, respectively, then diffusing outward to the approximate radial distance of pit from Claritin Coke Works. As time progresses, concentration of these pollutants farther away from the plant increases as indicated by the color key dark red being the highest concentration and dark blue being the lowest. Color uniformity at various lengths within the circle represents the uniform mass flow in the radial direction. Sulfur dioxide's diffusion coefficient is 0.122 cm2 per second, while benzene's is only 0.0962 cm2 per second, which is why sulfur dioxide's final concentration is much higher than that of benzene. On Pitt's campus, the concentration of sulfur dioxide in benzene after 24 hours is 22.3 and 0.21 moles per meter cubed, respectively, while in Claritin is 35 and 0.43 moles per meter cubed. With these high concentrations of harmful air pollutants from coking coal and correspondingly high energy demands, efficient and ecological solutions must be developed to preserve both our environment and the steelmaking industry. One such solution is using biomass charcoal as a replacement for coal. Biomass typically contains less sulfur and nitrogen than coal, rendering it a much more suitable candidate to reduce emissions. Carbonizing the biomass and using it as charcoal also helps resolve the problem of volatile biomass materials not functioning properly in processes and damaging equipment. Biomass charcoal combustion occurs faster than coal, reducing energy needs and increasing yield and efficiency. The amount of produced pollutants are also drastically decreased, making it much safer for surrounding communities. Another possible solution is the implementation of dry quenching as opposed to the current wet quenching of coke that uses sprayed water. This results in high carbon dioxide emissions and heat loss, while dry quenching, using nitrogen in a closed circuit to cool the coke, recovers heat in the form of steam, increasing efficiency and reducing cost. The availability of nitrogen and its recyclability render it an optimal alternative to wet quenching, popularized in such places as Japan, China, and Europe. If the steel industry wants to keep up with increasing demand and help reduce its environmental footprint, these changes must be implemented, despite potential cost barriers or bureaucratic hindrance. The simulation of these pollutants from Claritin Coke Works has shown the severity of the plant's pollutant problems and how it comes into play in our everyday lives in Pittsburgh. The egregious concentrations in the areas immediately surrounding the plant are a result of its operation at currently accepted government standards, standards that must be called into question when addressing environmental safety. With similar steel facilities existing globally and contributing to wide-scale pollution, it is clear that major changes to current regulations and procedures must be made to protect the health of both the planet and the people living in it.